All right, welcome back to another Vargas Team Podcast, number six, seven. I don't even know what number we are on, but if you've been following us through this journey, thank you again. So Vargas Team Podcast, if this is your first time here, we're just a bunch of real estate agents, real estate professionals that pretend to know or think that we know what we're doing in this business, but we often do not. And I'm kidding. We like to share with you guys some of our experiences, some of our life lessons, and um, you know, just teach you and at least share with you guys anecdotal stories that we have of the market. And hopefully that could be beneficial to you guys today. In this episode, we're gonna steer it more towards the real estate agency side. I think we talk a lot on our podcast about being a buyer, being a renter, being an investor, but a lot of the times we don't really focus on what it means to be a real estate agent. And so I was thinking today, I'm like, listen, if I was a real estate agent and I stumbled across this podcast, I think it'd be beneficial for me to learn, you know, some tips of the trade of how to be a better real estate agent, how to be a professional, more professional, better salesman, better marketer, and things that can help me in real estate. Or if I go outside of real estate, things that can help me in my business. So sound fair? Yes. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. So with that, I'm going to introduce everybody. Um, or you know what? I'm not going to introduce everybody. Everyone's going to introduce themselves. So to my <laughs> right, we have what do we got here? Hey, we got Mario Lopez here. Mario Lopez. <laughs> yeah. Mario just got fined for a fish tank that he disposed of on the last podcast episode. So if you're not aware of that, um, follow that podcast. And on my left, we have my beautiful wife, Chloe Vargas. And what do you specialize in, Chloe? I specialize in everything real estate. I'm a real estate associate, but I own a co-own a property management company with my lovely husband. Beautiful. My name is Isabella Garcia, and I will help you buy, sell, rent, <laughs> all of that good stuff. And together we form the Vargas team. <laughs> 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 Assemble. All right. Assemble. So uh, a lot of topics to talk. About. Oh, and who can? How can we forget Vero, who is finally mic'd in today? Our amazing producer. Yeah. Who behind the scenes? Yeah. So exactly. We need a fourth camera. We need a producer cam. But as of right now, Vero's just uh, warming up into getting instilled into the Vargas team. I guess you know group, but. She's always providing insight, pro- always providing value. And so hopefully today she can continue with that. So no pressure, no I'm pressure. Our oh, yeah. So it's not the Vargas team podcast anymore. It's the um, as is as is podcast. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, you know, I love that name. Um, all right. So look, let's get to the topics before people tune off and say, like, who are these people? Yes. Yeah, so, so Cervera Studio, we're still in the same studio, which used to be known as the news studio, newsroom studio, Cervera, but whatever. Uh, now it's just the Cervera studio. So it is much more hipper with the times, uh, sleeker, modern. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, leave a comment below if you like the new look and new feel, but I think it looks cool. More yeah. to come. More to come. Yeah, we love it. Clean and thank you for hosting us, Cervera. Yeah, yeah, I think this is just a, definitely phase one of the transformation of the studio, but so far it looks amazing. So we're impressed. We are impressed. All right. Um, let's get to it. Now, one of the first topics that I want to talk about, if I was a new agent tuning into a real estate podcast, what would be one of the first things I would want to know? And simply enough, I was just like, let's distill it to something very, very easy to grasp, which is what does it mean or what does it take to be a successful real estate agent in 2023? If I wanted to get into this business right now with no experience, what would I need to uh, do or what would I need to know that's going to be asked of me in order to be successful in this business. So you guys who are successful real estate agents in your own right, and Chloe is a successful business owner in a real estate business, what would you guys recommend uh, or advice to a new real estate agent? Time. You have to have a lot of time to give, and that is Monday mm-hmm. through Sunday. This is not part-time. It's not even full-time. It's full, full-time. So if you're not willing to give 60 to 80 hours a week, like minimum, this isn't the career for you. And I mm-hmm. tell that so many time in, time out. They're like, hey, um, you know, I was thinking about doing this on the side. I want to want to I want to get a little bit of extra cash or my cousin selling their house. Just ask for like, I would say, like maybe a gift from another realtor and just have them do the work because you're doing that person a disservice. If you're not available for them 24 seven, don't do the job. Yeah, that's my I agree, because if you're working your nine to five and doing this part time, you're going to get some important calls during your nine to five. You're going to, you know, get calls back from realtors, from the HOA, from your clients. And it doesn't look good to say, hey, I can reach out in like a few hours, you know? Right. Yeah. I'm I'm in a meeting from nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm in an eight hour meeting every day. The other thing I would say is like that goes with time is prepare to get your time wasted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, but a lot of oh, yeah. Sit in this yeah. People would call you nonstop, have you show 16 properties <laughs> and then go with somebody else. 
don't take anything personal. Take anything personal. And then on the contrary, Mario's still scarred from that. <laughs> marketing is a big, yeah. I think if you're not marketing yourself and if you don't know how to market yourself, and if you don't have a brokerage that helps you, hence, uh, Survive. market yourself, I think yeah. you're going to have a very hard time. For sure. And also wardrobe. I think a good suit is essential. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh? Yeah, tell the story. No, I just love <laughs> so Mark, uh, started, right? Tell us about when you yeah, tell it. to say how you had a how Isabel or you made an appointment for a suit supply. That's that's not how that worked. I mean, I had to get <laughs> pretty much had to max out my car. Yeah, <laughs> I had to go and and get my. But you got that money back, no? Yeah, we got that. Money back. <laughs> one transaction. No, one transaction. Yeah. <laughs> And we're back. All right, so we had some technical difficulties with Mario's microphone. Te technical. Technical. Mario's the technical. Yeah, Mario is always having difficulties. Like but qualities. Yeah, so um, anyways, we're talking about what it means to be successful. You guys were touching on... Uh, Wait, does this have tequila? No, it doesn't. No, it does no, not have tequila. It have? It's, it's just rum and coke. coke. Rum and coke. Where we yeah, code is good. Yeah. And and uh, bitters. bitters. Uh, okay. Mario was our... I went all out. Mario was our bartender today. No, I called him in front of the, the camera. <laughs> he should have been making them right now. No, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I yeah. I, so, going back to what it takes to be... Six, to what, it, what you should expect if you want to be successful as a real estate agent is probably a better way to phrase it, right? Because I think... That anybody who puts in the time and puts in the effort and puts in the uh, hard work is still not going to be able to make. No, I'm kidding. You could definitely make it, and you could you could uh, make a career. But I just think people vastly underestimate the amount of time, effort, patience, and sacrifice, and discipline it takes mm -hmm. to be successful. And I think discipline is such a underused term in all phases of business, but especially as a real estate agent, because you control your own time. Mm -hmm. And people who are in a structured nine to five who transfer or transition into being their own boss, mistaken that extra time that they have of not having the, uh, the structure as flexibility of them being able to do what they want. And that is a vastly big mistake to make because you have to be even more structured and even yeah. more disciplined and invest even more time than you were ever before and however much time you think you're going to invest, double, if not triple that. And I usually tell people in the first three years, seven days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day is like the bare necessity of what you need to at least do. And if you're not willing to do that, then it's not going to work out because there's going to be other people like Mario, like Isabel, like other people um, that are willing to work, you know, 1130 at night, 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock to send out an offer and then wake up at six o'clock in the morning to go show a property the following day on a Saturday morning, you know? Mm -hmm. So leave family event. Yeah. Like, leave family event. Don't go to a family event. And or birthdays. Yeah. A lot of sacrifice. But, you know, um, sacrifice just like everything is is difficult at the beginning of, you know, it's not pleasant in in short time, but it's always gonna reap a reward for you in the in the longer time. You yeah. Know? You know, you, you gotta, you gotta try to live like no one else. So you can live like no one else, you know? And so that's, that's kind of my two cents on the whole thing. But I definitely think that wardrobe is a big factor. Cause I've always thought, man, if someone's going to sell me one of the highest and not, if not more, ex most expensive financial things that I'm going to do in my life, do you want that person to work part-time to sell you the most expensive thing you're ever going to buy? Number one. And number two, do you want them to sell it to you in a t-shirt and shorts and sandals Yeah, because they want to be comfortable? And so maybe at some point as a real estate agent, you've earned the right to have more leisure in your wardrobe. And some some agents, to, some top producers do have that right. I just happen to love suiting. So to me, it's like, I just like the art of it. But if you do consider yourself somebody who's like, I got to get through the suiting because it's just what I have to do. And then I'll build a book of business and then I'll be more relaxed and sure. But to come in with that hubris of thinking, I'm going to wear shorts and a, and a, and a short and nobody knows me, and I'm just going to get clients like that. Yeah, you need an uphill to, battle. As a real estate agent, you become your own brand. Like you, you know, you can't show up to work in gym clothes. Um, you have to look presentable. Again, people come into the office um, looking for something to buy, and like they'll look at you in your gym clothes. I'll be like, okay, I can't take this guy he, serious. You know, he didn't take himself serious. Yeah, yeah he didn't take. Himself I've always had a rule too as a real estate agent. I'm like, you got to at least look like you can buy the property you're showing your client. Even if you can't, That's you know, and I've always thought of 
when I'm showing a, a property or even a rental that's a five thousand, ten thousand, eight thousand dollar rental, when Chloe and I lived in a sixteen hundred dollar rental, I would at least go and be like, I would look like I can afford the place. And part of that is is aesthetics and and um, optics for your client, but a, a lot of that for me was mental for like inspirational, motivational purposes of saying like, I may not be able to to live or rent or buy this property now that I'm showing my client, but. I do like the ability of being being able to show it and then have something to work towards and then feel and act like the man that I want to be that can afford that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of that is real estate. Psychological for yourself. And business is a lot more mental as it is, you know, physical with the amount of hours you got to put in. It's a lot of like being able to just be mentally strong and tough and have that fortitude to keep pushing forward. Do you guys agree? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I do think, man, it's hot in Miami, you know, and um, I, 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 why but suit supply has like the, the little, oh, that half, one. what is it? Half, uh, like, half line suits. Yeah. Um, that's been a, that's been a blessing. That's so I, I have to say, <laughs> yeah, Shout out to the write off, you know, um, yeah, but what was I going to say? I think one of the things that I've been doing a lot is trying to find a swag, right? But with things that don't require, you know, a tie, you know, a whole suit, you know, kind of f- find a way to, to... So what is that, like Lululemon joggers and have baseball cap? No, no, it's like bringing that. What yeah. right now with like a t-shirt? Like, yeah, you know, t-shirts or sneakers, you know? Sneaker, or you have on. Even too. Yeah, these are, Jack. these are golden goose. You pull your feet up, guys, so they can see the shoes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Loafers. I mean, I'm usually yeah, always in loafers, but... The ladies, yeah. too, I feel. Mm-hmm. I feel like... It's not, I mean, I love a good, we love good a good suit. Yeah. Um, just, I just, like Steven said, I just feel 110% myself when mm-hmm. I'm in a suit versus if when I'm in a dress. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just the weirdest thing. It's like this power, this, some, this yeah. confidence and strength that it just gives us a, a piece of cloth gives you, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, it is an art. But, you know, you can go to Zara. You can get beautiful blouses. You can get nice, like, yeah, you don't have to spend a white little trousers. Always have, like, even if it's a heel, maybe a small block heel, something to give you height, something something to give you stature. Mm-hmm. Because remember, when you're also in a business that's run by women, essentially, real estate has loads of women, and especially in the Miami market, you are up against all that competition. So you want to make sure that you bring in this elegance and this class mm-hmm. and something that people want to work with. Well, right? Top of that professionalism. I think that's been the number one thing. No. I mean, sometimes I, sometimes I'm not gonna lie, bro. I'll pull up in the t-shirt, but my professionalism and you know my knowledge about you know the areas, the properties. I mean, I grew up here in Miami, and I love it to death. You know, so having that knowledge kind of backs me up a little bit. But definitely, when you're going up against you know a whole city of women trying to sell your house, it's kind of tough. I think Steven said it to me too when I got first started in real estate is tell the story. Don't sell the product, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, like you're walking and you're like, this is a quartz countertop. Yeah, and don't be a pointer. It's like, two mm-hmm. bedroom. no, like tell the story. Oh, well, look, I know that you like cooking. This is like a beautiful kitchen mm-hmm. for this and you have enough space in the fridge. And when the kids come home, they can now eat in this breakfast counter. Like whatever it is, um, you sell the idea, you sell the story. And I do think that women are really good at doing that, right? Like yeah. you get to know your client on a yeah. personal basis and then you bring them, you tell them the story and they already feel comfortable and feel like you're part of their family yeah. where you're not wasting their time showing them properties you know don't fit their criteria. Yeah. And they don't feel like you're trying to sell them something exactly. at the end of the day, They're right? Like, hey, you don't like that. That's fine. We'll find yeah. something else. You know, don't push them towards the sale just because it's going to benefit you. Yeah. The idea is you want that client to be happy because how many times does that client refer mm-hmm. or end up coming back to you? Exactly. I think Stevens had the same client and they buy multi-million dollar properties and they've referred him clients. They come back to him. They're like, you know what? We want a bigger house. And they keep coming back to him because they know that at the end of the day, it's not about the money in his, po- in his pocket. It's about just being comfortable and knowing that he's knowledgeable in that field <laughs> and that they can trust him. Trust is number one, especially in, in our city. Like, yeah, no. that's a, I feel like everyone's a realtor. Good thing that you said is get to know your client. If you're a new agent, get to know your client. Ask them questions, personal questions, you know, find out. Um, where does the kid go to school? Where, yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. How many kids they have. Um, where they like to vacation. Just anything. Just get to know them because that'll always come back when you're looking for their properties or looking at the pictures that you might show them, the listings that you might show them. Something will catch your eye. Oh, this will be perfect for this client. You know, it kind of gives you more value as well so get to know your client ask them questions 
write down their information, their birthdays, you know, their anniversaries. I love that's that. a good one. I love reaching out to clients on, on their birthdays. birthdays. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I mean, they're like, whoa. Yeah. I, mean, I know. I know. Put it on your calendar. I see. I see. Uh, I can see that happening. But it's true. It's true. Or thank you card. I think we said in the podcast yeah, before. Yeah, like, few years I would send thank you cards to all my thank clients. Thank you um, and like even gifts, like a closing gift. Yeah, it's closing just like, gifts for sure. Just that little touch. So don't just get them a bottle of wine. Get them like if you know that the wife. We still buy ring doorbells. We ring doorbells. Yeah, like they're oh, great. How much were those? A hundred dollars. Oh, hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. Depending on which we get. And like, nah, man, like you're making yeah, million dollar sales, of no. course. But like, we we would get for rentals. We would for the yeah. vases, like a tip. Well, hold on, man. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So a vase, like, yes, it's a vase. <laughs> so is it a vase? Is it one of these? I was talking about getting to know your clients, and I remember I had a client last year who she, uh, she I sold her a property, and she loves her dog and she would take her dog oh, to like yeah. the showings yeah, yeah. and so um she would spoil her dog and so i bought her a tiffany a dog bowl it was it was like a set it was like a set of dog bowls but from tiffany and it was like, glass no they were like porcelain. porcelain oh and it had like tiffany and co on it it was really yeah cute. it was really nice and very bougie dog yeah, very bougie <laughs> dog. But, she, but the thing was that it it Get to know your client because I was thinking I could buy her something for her, but she loves her dog. So I think that's even more be, valuable. Yeah, more valuable. It's like, a child. it's like you're going to give my child something. Yeah. It's way more also, valuable. Awesome. I've always thought about it like if you're going to buy a gift, buy something that could be usable. So every time they sure. use it, they, they never may Yes. So yeah. Ring Doorbell is great for that because you're always using the Ring Doorbell. And so you're like, oh, my realtor got me this. If you buy a bottle of wine, they're going to store it away. Or if they use it, they're going to lose it. You're drink it. And then they're going to drink it. And then that's it. That's the end of it. Or you yeah. buy them like a magnet or on their. Like, you know, <laughs> what the? That's a 1995 yeah. swag. Some notepads, pens. the notepads, the pens. But, no. <laughs> but being a new agent, I think it's it's about which is another one of those topics, and that I had here, which is like, how do you instill confidence in your clients when you're brand new at this business, when you basically uh, haven't don't have that much experience under your belt, but yet you have to portray to your clients that you are comfortable enough to manage their transaction without any hiccups. And that, I think, is the hardest part of transitioning into being an agent, right? Because a you have to, you, yes, a lot of research. But I also think that if you're going to go out there and do it, you need a mentor. You mm -hmm. need somebody where when you go out in the field, you portray this confidence mm -hmm. and aura of saying, like, I know everything. And then secretly, when you're done with the showing, you're calling me like, yeah. dude, how do I do this? Yeah, what they asked me this question, what do I say? Like, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll get right back to you. And you have no idea. Yeah. Having like, a mentor is invaluable. I think for us, um, Giovanni Garcia was a huge. Shout out to, shout out to Yobi. Yobi. Um, he would, well, you and Yobi, I had the two best mentors. I'm sorry. I had Steven and Yobi. And I, Isabel knows because at the time she was like the secretary in the office. It was like hours upon hours just trying to educate yourself. And one thing yep. he did say to Steven, and it stuck with me, and I think it stuck with Isabel because she was in there too, is learn your contracts. Understand the contract in and out. Because what's going to happen is if you don't know, the other agent may and have one up on you and you yep. always want to feel protected because you will go through altercations during the process. Like, mm -hmm. But if you do not know, have reference on that contract and you don't know exactly what your client signed, you and your client are screwed. Yeah. So, and you're protecting your brokerage. Uh, so at the end of the day, if you don't know your contracts, get trained on it. Go to all the sessions that you need to. And like Steven said, find that mentor that you can call and have on speed dial that knows those contracts, but you also don't want to be a burden to them. So if you are looking for a mentor, one thing I do um, advise is just have a benefit to that mentor, right? If you're a person that's really good at social media or good uh, marketing or whatever that might be, bring that over to the mentor and be like, hey, I'll help you with your social media if you can help me when it comes down to like understanding contracts and if I have questions, make it beneficial on both ends. Hang out with other realtors as yeah. well. Like go to these networking events, go to the office because the more you hear, you know, you might not have the, be dealing with the situation now, but you'll hear one of your colleagues dealing with a certain situation in a purchase or a sale. And you kind of learn from that, you know, you hear... I, yeah, like Chloe mentioned, I was an admin at the one Miami office in Cervera before I transitioned into an agent myself. And I would always listen to Steven's phone calls. I'd always like take down notes like, okay, like this is what I could say, like if I ever deal with this. Um, so I loved having you guys in the office when you guys were there. You guys were always there. And before I was there, I had to clock in at nine. You guys were always there. Um, so I'm really happy that I have you guys as mentors. Giovanni's still in the office and he's yeah. amazing too. So yeah, definitely go to the offices, go to these networking events, 
and do more research, as much research as you can. Or come to Cervera. Yeah, or come to Cervera. But on that, so it, what Chloe was saying. That's by proxy. Being by proxy. But, <laughs> but, so I have a few things to say about that. When, when Chloe's advice is brilliant, which is add value to the person that you're giving. But also look at it as your value cannot be, hey, what do you need help with? That's not value because somebody who is a top producer or, or is successful doesn't have the time to teach you what they need to be done. So you have to already kind of do your own research and be like, look, I don't have a lot of skill sets in this area, but what I do have is a lot of resourcefulness in another area. And I see their business is in need of that. So before I ask them if they, if I can help them with something, cause that's the first thing people say, it's like, Hey, can I buy you a cup of coffee? Can I buy you lunch to pick your brain? Can I, uh, what can I help you with? Understand guys that for a lot of people, a cup of coffee is five bucks. They're going to make way more per hour. It costs them more. They're losing money by having a cup of coffee with you. It's not anything to offend you, but it's also just so that you can realize how can I provide value to this person? If I'm really good at social media, let me make five social media posts before and send it to their email before they even ask me anything. Just be like, I could do this for you. Does this interest you? And so that way you have value without them even knowing and instantaneously, and then they could decide to for themselves like, this person is somebody valuable on my team and they then do it for free. That's the other thing too. It's just like when some people are so like, they feel like, oh, I can't work for free. It's like, you nope. A, no one owes you anything, number one. B, if you don't have the experience, the reps and the knowledge base and, and you can't even charge for that, I mean, for not doing it for free to get that information, it's like we're paying you essentially. That's the way when I looked at it. When I was a new agent, I was willing to work for free to understand things because that my collateral, the way I would barter is my time was for free, but I would get so much knowledge in exchange. I mean, it's like paying to go to school and we pay to go to community college. We pay to go to university. But for the second that you say, hey, I'm going to invest a few hours of my time to learn something most people aren't willing to do. And that's usually when I know what agents are going to work and what agents aren't going to work. Because if, if that bothers you, then it's going to be a very, very tough time. I also think if you don't have a fire up your... Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't have some kind of benefit at the end of the day. Like, let's say like I had $2,000 in my account altogether and I had bills I had to pay when this time came. I was fired from a job. I had nothing. Um, And I remember turning to see and I'm like, hey, do you need help? Like I had an event company and it, things had slowed down. It was like right before COVID. And I had told him, I was like, look, as much as I love events, I need to, I need to make like serious money. And he's like, hey, just come help me. Remember? And I was like, okay, sure. And I'm here three, five, almost five years later. And I'm just like, if I didn't take the initiative and I didn't feel like, how am I going to pay my next bill? There was, there was no fire under me. I wouldn't be in the position I am today. Yeah. Um, You need to be scared every single day of your life on <laughs> how you're going to make that next payment. If you are not, you just don't, it, it's just, it's like, it's like having a child and not knowing like how you're going to pay for their stuff, you know, but, it's, yeah. but luckily we didn't have that situation and we had time that we could sacrifice. So I thought, hey, if I'm going to give 14 to 16, literally 14 to 16 hours a day of my life for the next two years, at least I need to see a benefit. I saw benefits within three months. So mm -hmm. but I was willing to sacrifice that time. If you have the time, if you don't have a significant other and you're single, do it. You know what I mean? Like, because there's another thing, too, that you, when Steven and I, when he started real estate, I didn't understand it. I was working at nine to five corporate America. I was like, what? Like, you're coming home at 10. Like, are you crazy? Like, I feel so alone, you know? It's hurting our relationship. It's hurting our relationship, the whole thing. Until I got into real estate, I was like, oh, I get it. Sorry. You know? And um, and it worked because we both did it. Isabel and Mario, prime example. Worked, they didn't even do real estate at that time. They did it together and it works. It's 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 sacrifice on both ends, even if you are with somebody or if you're not. Just have that in mind. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I would say and last thing I would say to that before we move to the topic is when you were saying have a fire. I, I saw it in a podcast somebody had mentioned it's, it's you're either a spark or a flame and you and you're called out and you're found out depending on the uh, the way the wind blows. So the wind in this instance is when hard times happen. If you're a spark, you're going to get basically blown out as mm -hmm. a flame. Uh, you're going to get turned off, if you will. And if you're a flame, the wind is only going to propel you to be even stronger, kind of like a forest fire. And that's when most people would find out if they really have that drive and fire within them. Um, and sometimes you need to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations to really find out, like, I pretend to be this person, 
but oh am I really this pro? Like when you get squeezed, what comes out of you is essentially mm-hmm. this fear and, you know, or does inspiration and courage come out of you, you know? So resiliency. Yeah. Resiliency. Like my boy right here with Mario, like being resilient, listening to us talk. Yeah. No, I think one of the biggest things for me was my father, um, uh, Louis Restrepo. Shout out uh, to Louis. Shout out to, uh, <laughs> shout, shout out to Curtains and Blinds. Uh, if you guys ever need curtains here in uh, Miami, it's called curtains. in Breakle, Curtains yeah. and Blinds. Yeah. Yeah. Blackout shades, motorized system, and he's amazing. Hunter yeah. Douglas, whatever you guys need, my dad's got you. Because I'm gonna, I was just messaging someone for the blackout shades. Yeah. So I have a job with this guy, and you know I'm super comfortable. My father, <laughs> super yeah. comfortable. And my first month, oh, see when your camera went up. My first year in real estate, they go to me, hey man, you either, you know, you got to quit. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, you got to work this full time if you really want to get ahead. You got to put a fire under your ass. I was like, all right, let me try it out. And boy, it worked. I grinded. You have to you have to work. Well, you're still grinding too. Yeah, I mean, like- yeah, for sure. But but now I kind of got the gist of kind of like the things that I need to do. Now I got more of a group, right? Now I could do like these videos on the side. I do uh, photo listings on the side, the listings for, for, for realtors as well sometimes um, just because of the skills that I have. But if I didn't take this step, I don't think I would have, I, I would have been where I am right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. So do you think Big that's probably one of the main things that you would tell new agents is like you got to be willing to hustle? Yeah. And you, grind. You got to just be willing to unless to do all the things. Network. Yeah. Unless family. Unless you come in and you're selling like five million dollar properties and like which does have your friend's yeah. dad owns <laughs> you're like sixteen <laughs> yachts, you know, and it's like and you're in that sphere, then then none of this pertains to you. Yeah. Watch another YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, if you're if you're out here, you know, closing. You know, Section A rentals every month. <laughs> you know, then this is for you. This one has been here from the gutter. That's how from the trenches. The, you know, trenches. That's how we're. we're. It as it. I, <laughs> I would say one other thing that agents need is energy. Yeah, that. you have to. You know, you can't be boring on the phone. Um, you, you gotta have, smile. Uh, yeah, be positive. Be positive. Like, yeah. yeah, we're gonna get this deal done. Yeah, yeah it's all strong. You yeah, yeah. like, mm-hmm. you, don't worry. We lost it. We're gonna find you another yeah, one. Like, yeah. guys, you're the psychologist. Like, yeah, like you are walking them off. You're walking them off the ledge. Like, I don't know how many times. Like, you're ha- you have to hold their hands. You have to babysit them. They hired you for a reason, um, from start to finish. Mm-hmm. The moment they lose confidence in themselves. And you can build that confidence. They lose yep. confidence in you. you. Yeah. So big time. I would also say, like one of the, one of my pet peeves now is, I, I I don't like when people say, "Hey, I'm just following up," or "Hey, I'm touching base," or "Hey, I'm circling back." Like if you're an <laughs> agent, I, if you're, I never say that. What right? I know this is no you because if, for if, if like, you yeah email. if you if you send an email that says I'm circling I'm circling back I'm touching up I'm following up right. You're basically, they, they you, might as well, you might as well just be saying, hey, I'm a salesperson. I need money. Please buy from me. You're basically oh, saying that. Well, that is at least what it exudes to me. So like instead, use other ways of capturing their attention. Sometimes I'll have people who don't answer me and then I'll email them and be like, hey, man, so are you not buying anymore? Question mark. You know, like so, something like that, where it's just kind of like straight Words. to the point. Right. Yeah. And and if I was when I was a new agent. I remember that when people would reach out to me, it's like, hey, can you take this call? Like right now, even if I had the time, I would say, I'm busy. I have a meeting right now. I could do it in 30 minutes. You never wanted it to seem like you're always available. Now, in my career, I'm really not available. So, but people would text me and they'll be like, hey, can we jump on a call? And then I'll be like, hey, I have 1 p.m. tomorrow available. Does that work for you? Because I have a meeting. But before I'd be like, if you were that one person that somebody would say, hey, are you available for a call right now? It's like, yeah, yeah, let me call you right now. It's just like, it doesn't seem like your per- your person out there, at least to the person calling you, your client, your pr- your prospect, that you're someone who's doing business yeah. at the level that you want to be doing business, or maybe they feel comfortable with somebody to work with. So it's not that fake it till you make it type of deal where some people would be like, yeah, that's what that is. I think it's more kind of like, it's essentially trying to aspire to be the person that you want to be mm-hmm. um, and then acting like that person. And then eventually your reality will, will will reach that vision that you have for yourself. And then because if you don't if you don't maintain yourself as that person while you're walking around and exuding that confidence, then at least that's the, that's what wor- has worked for me. Probably different has worked for something. Um, Mario has done something different and it's worked for him and Isabel and Chloe. But that's what's worked for me. I would mm-hmm. say establish your own team. 
like your lender, your photographer, yes. have people that you can trust mm -hmm. that are that you're willing to, you know, throw your clients to and make sure that, you know, they're, they're leaving a good reputation just all across the board. So just make sure you're building those relationships while you have the time, because there's going to hopefully for you, the person listening to this, you won't have time in the next year or two, right? You have so many clients and just completely overwhelmed. That's a good sign. What I would say is like, just make sure the downtime that you do have, you're working on your marketing, you're working with other vendors, you're working on building relationships, you're out networking, so on and so forth. And you're using that time in the right way, right? Um, if you're coming home at like five o'clock as a realtor, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, if you're coming in at home at five o'clock yeah. and you're on Pinterest checking recipes, yeah, I, I, I was that person taking weekends <laughs> off, planning like what you're going to, what vacation you're going to go on next. You're doing it wrong. There's something up. If you're not so. getting home and doing this. <laughs> you're not doing right. if you're not getting home and like overwhelmed <laughs> barely even have time to take a shower have to order takeout every night you're probably yeah. doing it wrong all right one last thing before we we uh there's a couple two more talks i want to talk about we'll just rush through these real quick how do you break into the luxury market which is a lot of people want to get into this business and they're like i want to sell a five million dollar property right now i want to do a ten thousand dollar rental right now right and sometimes it doesn't start off <laughs> that way um and and yeah. I, I had this and I was I was reminded by this because I had a conversation with a with a friend of mine who's a real estate agent as well. And and I was telling him my first few years, I was doing a lot of rentals, which is usually what happens when you get into the business. You, and you don't really have out. any network or, you know, and you're just working your way up. I just became really, really good at doing rentals. And to the point where I, we were doing, I think, what was it like eight to 15 rentals a month? It was like seven to ten thousand dollars a month on rentals alone, you know? So I was starting to get really, really good at doing just rentals for a long time. And I remember he was like, yeah, but you work in Brickle. The rentals there are like $2,000 to $4,000 a month. It's like almost doing a sale, you know, where in other areas it's like a thousand bucks or 1500 mm -hmm. bucks during that time. Right now you can't find a $1,500 mm -hmm. rental, but before you could. So part of how do you break into the luxury market is like, well, what market are you working in? I think that's the number one. Even mm -hmm. if you start just doing rentals in Coral Gables, well, the Coral Gable market is five to six to ten thousand dollars starting. That's like a low rental over there, yeah. right? And so you naturally just start getting into that market. I think that if you if you take it, if you start looking at it that way and start saying, I want to break into a two million dollar listing, no one's gonna trust you with a two million dollar listing, but mm -hmm. they may trust you with a six thousand dollar rental. And that person who buys that who rents that property mm -hmm. in two years may be looking to buy a two million dollar property and or then knows sell some, it an uncle that's five years wanting, yeah because that's happened to you or knows the uncle like a year after working with you they're like man this guy's responsive he's great to deal with he's energetic he's friendly i'm gonna refer my even though i know he probably hasn't sold the property like this i'm just gonna refer it mm -hmm. and most of the time that client ends up really happy so yeah you build on that confidence yeah. as oh. well. Don't ever think that someone that's like renting something for two thousand dollars isn't gonna buy yeah, a half a million that. dollar yeah, property. Yeah, for so. sure, that yeah. treat all them the all equally. Yep. Trust me, for you sure. gotta plant the seeds. That's yeah, right. always make that garden. Okay, Vero. <laughs> <laughs> no, another one would be, man, put yourself in that spectrum. Put yourself where these people are going to be hang out where they hang you know, out not only that but market yourself as that you know you could go and take a picture you know in coral gables if you want to do coral gables in the nicest house get a property tour mm -hmm. do something to put yourself in front of the type of pl things that you want to do yeah. that's really how you do it you know i wanted a long time ago i wanted to be a travel photographer same thing just go and travel do it you know, go into debt. Go into debt. <laughs> Is that what but, telling them? <laughs> yeah, and that's literally that's what you do when you become an agent. You no, but yeah, put yourself you, into debt. You, you, <laughs> have, yeah. you have to. You definitely have to put you have yourself. You have to be willing to things. write that check because yeah, there's yeah. going to be moments. That what, you what about you? But what what do you think about breaking into the luxury market? Um, join those clubs. I know. Again, get into debt. You know, you have to swipe <laughs> the card. But like, join these clubs. Um, Soho House. Soho House. A, a um, good gym. Yeah, a good gym. Where you can meet. House cheaper it is. Yeah. yeah. If you're under 27, yeah. I think it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, join that. There's a go bunch to, of like. Go to the restaurants, go to the bars. Really that... fancy like tennis clubs now as well. I think that's another great place if yeah. you know, you're you active. Go, yeah, you know, when we have time. <laughs> but yeah, so that I think hopefully that would give you some perspective. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is because uh, we're here right now is get yourself a good broker. And brokerages are are very different nowadays than what they were 10 to 20 30 years ago um i think that a lot of brokerages have to adapt 
And, you know, not because we work with Cervera, but I do think that they're a, a top broker in this area and in, in Miami for a reason, but because they adapt and they have a space like this for us to to create content. And they really, I think, push their 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 team, not only their in-house team, but also their agents to also get out there and create content. Because today, that's my last tip. If, if I think all of us can share, we create this content to get out in front of as many people as possible. Now, the reason why I create this content is because I used to try to do mailers and I used to do door knocking and I used to do cold calling and I did ads. all of that and ads and I spent a lot of money and a lot of time and it was just exhausting and you would get burnt out. So my creative outlet with doing podcasts and doing content, and doing property tours and doing informative videos was a lot less uh, taxing on me because it was something that I like to do. And so it was easy for me to put that out there and get the results because a lot of the time it's just being able to be consistent with it. But if you like door knocking and if you like cold calling <laughs> and if you like spending money on mailers and that's what you're good at, then do that. But you have to be very consistent in doing that. Consistent and like we said, sacrifice time. I remember when Steven told me and I and you, Isabel, you know, because it happened during COVID, right before COVID, we launched this pod, like not the podcast, but the channel. And he was like, hey, I'm going to start filming a YouTube channel. I'm like, we already don't have enough time. And he's like, we'll figure it out. And he was filming at midnight, I would say like once or twice a week. And we had like how many, we had like maybe four followers every week or something. That was very slow. And then it just started taking off. I remember and when I got 20, 12 of those were my family members. Yeah. Like, yeah, subscribe <laughs> to the like, channel. And then I got like four more that weren't my family members. And I'm he like, told wow, my best static. friend this. And he's, she's like, how long are you going to do this for? Because I remember we were even traveling. We had gotten COVID. He would still come out with a video. And he said, I will do it for a year. And I want to see how it goes the first year. And and we'll go from there. I'm like, he's going to do it for a very long time. And she's like, you think so? I'm like, I know him. <laughs> he doesn't commit to something unless he knows he's going to go take this full speed ahead. So, and he has. Like, this is what the podcast has turned into. And, like, now we have, you know, Mario's tours. And, like, Isabel now doing content on social media. And we have a producer. Love, we have a producer. Hey, and, like, hey. you know, <laughs> it, it, you grow. And it all started with him just saying, hey, I'm starting this YouTube channel. And this just manifested into this which is amazing and we're very blessed for it but Amen. if you don't take that first step you're never going to do it if you're going to say tomorrow and tom tomorrow will never come so the idea is you're listening to this right now take these notes take these ideas and go full speed ahead because the only person stopping themselves is you so Oof. can't wait to make a clip of that all right <laughs> yeah. Finish off with that, man. yeah i know I'm gonna, i think we're gonna finish <laughs> no, off there it. dude I'm people ask us all the that's time right. and I'm like, turn the cameras off that's it yeah, <laughs> mics <laughs> off yeah we're done and, and with that i'm Sorry. on burgundy no, there's no see you tomorrow to san diego all right no um that was great guys i think that this was an informative different podcast to hopefully you new agents out there who are trying to source um, what brokers you should work with or you know whether it's server or it's not server or whatever just get a good one get a mentor and then you know uh, be willing to put in a lot of time and effort and realize that nobody owes you anything when you accept that fact i think you'll you'll crush it um, other than that, guys, if you found value from the content that we shared today and you like today's message and you like today's video, let us know in the comment section below. Also, like the video because that helps us out tremendously with the algorithm and helps your boy out to grow his channel and everybody wants growth. So do those two things. And if you want to see more content like this from Mario, me and I Isabel and Chloe and I, um, let us know because we could create other content. And if you have questions, also send them in the comment box below. And with that said, guys, we will see you all on the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.